Welcome to Confessions from a Pastor's Wife. Thank you so much for joining me. If you like the content of this video, please don't forget to like and subscribe to the YouTube channel. You can also catch this on Apple and Spotify podcasts. Well, I am back. Thank you so much for being patient with me. I'll be honest, I recorded this a couple times and I sat on it because... I was kind of nervous to put it out. I never want to offend anybody, but I'm coming to the realization that being a Christian is offensive to some people, and I really need to get over my fear. Um, Something that I'm praying to God for is like more confidence in what I'm saying and more discernment so that what he places on my heart I can articulate properly because I do feel like there's times I say something and I'm like, that's not what I meant to say, and it can be taken a different way. But anyways, something that I'm trying to get over. So um, what I wanted... uh, what I want to say too is that, you know, I'm, I am glad that I sat with this for a little bit because I have more information. I have more topics. It's not just going to be about this one cartoon that I saw um, and I'll describe it in a little bit, but um, it's just going to be like a broad uh, warning really about the demonic things that are taking place, all the truth mixed with lies that Satan is, you know, really ramping up and and trying to confuse everybody. And I just feel like some Christians, because I've seen it myself, are falling into the traps. And, you know, that's the basis, one of the basis for my podcast is I want to make sure that Christians don't fall into traps while trying to live in a secular world, you know. It is a very difficult balance. You don't want to, again, like myself, I don't want to be offensive to anybody. But I think the time for bold Christians um, is coming because, as I said, um, Satan knows that his time is is dwindling. So he's ramping up. And I think that we need maybe to match his um, aggressiveness, but still coming from a place of love. It's really difficult because, like I've said before, Christians have done things in over the past thousands of years that, you know, they use the Bible in such a way to oppress people. And that's not what Christianity is about. That's not what Jesus was about. He's love God, love people. Those are the two principles of the whole Bible summed up. And, you know, people will do things to, you know, personal gain. And it, it's it's just something that's within human nature. And... um It makes me sad. So I want to turn the tide, but I don't want my friends to get caught up. So anyways, I am glad once again that I sat with this because I have more info and and more to talk about. So I'll just get into it. Um, So a friend of mine sent me a TikTok a while ago about this cartoon that Amazon Prime is putting out. And I will try to link the video that I got from TikTok below. Um, And if it doesn't work, if you want to see the cartoon, reach out to me and I'll try to get it to you another way. But anyways, this cartoon talks about the fall of Lucifer. So it says that um, in the beginning, you know, there was the golden gates and it talks about heaven. And then it talks about this angel called Lucifer who had these amazing, fantastical, imaginary, whimsical ideas for the world. But because heaven was so strict and they wanted order They didn't like what he had to say, so they kicked him out. And I will say that there's a lot of truth mixed with lies, which makes this really confusing for somebody because there are things that are factual and then he mixes in. This makes me feel like it's Lucifer with his fingerprints all over it. Um, It's truth that's mixed with lies and it can confuse a new believer. It can confuse someone who's sitting on the fence It can confuse little kids who have Christian parents and they're like, oh, I've never heard of this before because like I said, some is factual, some is not. Anyway, gets kicked out. Then they talk about how it was Adam and Lilith in the beginning, not Eve. And when Adam tried to subdue Lilith, she was like, no, I'm not having it. And she got cast out. So then Eve was created. So... I'll touch on that in a little bit, but if you know your Bible, you know that that's not true. Anyway, then it comes to Lucifer finding Lilith, and they have this beautiful love story, and then they want to share the gift of free will with humanity, so they offer Eve an apple, and she eats it, and for this deception that they've done, they get banished to hell, and um, it says that Lucifer would never get to see the good in people, just the bad. And it just, it made him seem like he was someone who just, you know, wanted the best for people. And 
didn't want anything to do with like his pride didn't get in the way he didn't want people to worship him like yeah he did that's why he was told bye you know and and he tried he basically tried to create a coup in heaven and not got off his pet like off of uh his throne which is just not not something that you can do anyways so they make it seem like it's just this love story and then you know satan he went into despair and then Lilith thrived and it, there's actually a quote that says she sang her song for all demon kind so <laughs> she's a demoness I looked into this Lilith person and what I found was in Mesopotamia back a long time ago um, there was a really high mortality rate for infants there was a lot of babies dying and they didn't understand why and back then they were very into spirit world they they were very in tune with the spirit realm and they felt like there was a demon who was preying on pregnant women and babies and they they um called her lilith and they would put pictures of her like in their clay and in in their artwork they would put pictures of her and put it around their house and on their babies like jewelry like a protective medallion because they believed that if she saw the picture of herself she would back away she would flee um and now people are using Lilith as a symbol of female empowerment because she told Adam no thanks when he tried to subdue her so and i mean that's a whole different topic um it's not that bad <laughs> i've actually talked about it in one of my earlier podcasts so um like talking about submission and and why women you know if you're in a christian marriage why submission is not a bad thing and um so that's what this lilith person is about and so it's just been kind of construed and I, it's hard for me because I have friends who believe in it and I don't want to like tell them that their belief it, it's kind of like do you know the full thing behind it like she preyed on babies and 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 pregnant women like do you understand that and like I don't really think that that's a, a good symbol for female solidarity <laughs> but I mean to each their own at the same time like if you're not a Christian and you believe in that I'm I'm not here to make you feel bad about it you know just know that it's not factual anyway um so again this is a cartoon that kids can watch and it it store it follows the line the person narrating it is the love child between um lucifer and lilith so the princess of hell is what she calls herself and it's just it talks about how the energy and and their kingdom and hell grew with the amount of people that were in it and it's like celebrating it and and it just i re i remember watching it and i was like this can't be real this is such a slap in the face and it's really i don't see anyone doing these things to muhammad to buddha like none of these other religions are being taunted and messed with. Number one, I think it's because if if you do that in these other religions, they're going to come for you. But Christians, for some reason, aren't allowed. The moment we raise our voice and say, no, that's not right and you shouldn't be doing that, we're labeled as bigots. We're labeled as as crazy, you know, like conspiracy theorists and stuff like that and it's such a double standard again I think it's because we created it to a point but like like if I just don't see it happening with other religions and it kind of frustrates me a little bit but that's what makes me think that you know or, or tells me that Christianity is the one true religion and Satan is trying to get you to think that it's not to pull you away. His whole thing is to just pull you away from God. And as I said, he's ramping up. Now, the other things that I've seen is strictly within the music business. And there are people who are coming out and saying that um, there are demonic rituals performed over certain songs over certain albums there was a gentleman who is from i believe the uk i want to say scotland he was in a boy band back in the day i believe it was called boy zone and it was really popular and he and his bandmates were approached by these powers that be they never named them they just 
call them the powers that be, the, the elite, the people in charge, um, who were offering them things. And when they read the fine print, it was like kind of scary. And they were like, no thanks. So have you ever wondered why someone like Sam Smith, all of a sudden, you know, he was a good artist and really kind of like middle of the road to low key. And then all of a sudden he just pops out of nowhere and he's really popular. And then he's doing demonic rituals during a concert at an award show. Taylor Swift, she has a chokehold on people right now. I think that she's an amazing lyricist, but I think honestly that she sold her soul. You know, you hear that phrase, but there's people who are whistleblowing saying that you literally, that is what they're asking you to do. They are performing demonic things over these CDs, over the, or sorry, over these records. And, um, for popularity to suck people in and like for me taylor swift is like one of the prime examples of that i didn't believe it at first when i heard about it but then i saw one of her concerts and she's doing a demonic witchcraft ritual during the concert and there's a bunch of people that corroborated that and some christians have stopped following her now taylor swift is herself a proclaimed christian So I'm not about to get out there and be like, hey, Taylor, you probably shouldn't be doing this stuff because I'm not close with her. But I really pray, I have been praying that someone in her circle, her family will wake her up to just be like, hey, maybe you shouldn't be doing that. And then Justin Timberlake, he just released a music video that I watched that is disturbing to say the least. Very demonic things going on he's in a club and he's approached by a woman who looks kind of off and then all of a sudden she licks his face and it's weird and then like the veil on his eyes drop like all of a sudden he can see her for what she is and then she turns into a demon and it's she's got black wings and then this black substance that looks like tar comes out of her mouth and then everyone in the club is like doing things to each other and like it was very Sodom and Gomorrah um and and it just made me so sad like why is this okay why because they're gonna say it's just art you know dolge cat it's just art and then Billie Eilish she has a album that um, is titled um, All Good Girls Go to Hell. Why? Why is that okay? So as much as I dislike it, I, I, they laugh it off when they get questioned about it. You know, oh, it's just art. Oh, it's just a joke. Oh, it's this. Oh, it's that. They have all the excuses. I want you guys to be careful with it. Lucifer, when he was in heaven, if you didn't know, um, was in charge of music. And so it makes sense that the music industry is full of demonic type of influence. And some of the lyrics that you're bopping along to, if you're actually listening to them, they're curses that you're putting over your life. And then you got your little kids singing them. And it's just, it's just not good you know Lil Nas is another really good example of it he had when he first started he was a really good like poppy kind of star for young kids and that's how they hook you in they get you hooked as a young kid and then all of a sudden he turned to um you know he had very demonic music videos he made shoes with Nike that were very demonic like 666 on them and was said to have a drop of blood in them and it was just so demonic and then you know, he in one of his music videos is depicted being put on the cross. And it's just it is very blatant making fun of not having respect for Jesus, for Christianity, for Christians. And I don't think for myself, I have stopped listening to secular music because I don't want to get caught up in that. I don't want to get trapped. And I know that some of my Christian friends, they listen to Taylor Swift. They listen to Lil Nas and they don't think anything of it. Billie Eilish, Justin Timberlake, like they they don't think anything of it. And I just think that you need to ask for discernment and really listen to what you're listening to. Look at what you're watching. 
Don't let the world numb you into not paying attention. We need to be awake more than ever now because as I said, he is ramping up his attacks because time is ticking away and he knows the time is coming. All of my Christian friends, all of the Christian TikTok is talking about something big coming. Our spirit knows that the time is coming. And so I I think that's the basis of this podcast. I want to get it out there. I want to say it so that you guys are aware. So for this podcast, it's a very big warning. Um, and again, if you're a Christian and you're listening to these things, don't feel like I am judging you on it. I definitely am not. I used to listen to these people too, to Justin Timberlake, to Taylor Swift. You know, I liked them as artists. I liked them as people. But to see the road that they're going down now, it's a little sad. It's kind of disappointing to me because I thought, you know, that they had a little bit more integrity than that. And I don't know the ins and outs of it, but I know what I'm seeing and it it's not good, you know. So I am not judging you if that's something that you're into, but I just want you to be aware and you make your own decisions and ask for discernment. And as I said, look at what you're watching and and maybe look at the lyrics because there's songs that I remember singing when I was young, when I actually listened to the lyrics, I was like, I'm surprised my mom let me listen to that, <laughs> you know? So they get you with the kitschy beat. So you just have to be careful with it. Anyways, I hope this was informative. Um, I'm going to try to link the video below, but if you don't see it, it's because I was not successful with uploading the video for the cartoon. If you want it, um, reach out to me if you haven't seen it already and I will get you the link. You can email me if you're on my social media, send me a message. If you're on my Facebook uh, and you send me a message or a friend request, there's been so many hackers that I get nervous on Facebook especially because, you know, I've built up my social media and I've been really careful and I have never been hacked. Um, so I pray to God that I will not be hacked, but um let me know that you're listening to my podcast and then I can add you and, and um, send you the link and, and then we can converse that way. So um, if you've sent me a friend request and I haven't accepted it, it's because I don't know. <laughs> so with all the scammers out there, you've got to be careful. So um, if you like th this video, again, don't forget to subscribe. Uh, send it to someone who may be in need of a little... Um, eye-opening a little bit of uh you know this is what's happening so um and I will hopefully be back next week with another um episode from confessions from a pastor's wife I hope you guys have a great evening mm -hmm.